Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Codetover Day 8. In today's video, I am going to show you another cool extension that I've been using a lot lately. And to demonstrate, I'm going to use actually my Codetover 2023 um, repo that you can find in Alexandra Martinez. No, sorry, in Prostep. Uh, if you go to github.com slash Prostep slash Codetover23, you will be able to find this repo with all of the listed videos and their corresponding code or link. In this case, I want to demonstrate the GitHub Actions um, extension. So if you go to extensions, you can search for GitHub Actions here and you can just install it. And this is pretty much the same thing that you can see, well, almost the same thing that you can see from GitHub Actions, uh, but here from VS Code. And it was very good for me to be able to see that. Maybe not at first, because um, it doesn't really tell you all of the errors, but it's good to have it here. It kind of makes things way easier, especially with the secrets. So I just wanted to share that out with all of you. Anyway. Um, you kind of have to be already familiar with CICD by this point, otherwise it's going to be a little bit hard for you to follow what I'm doing. But if you are not familiar with CICD, I got you covered. Just go to youtube.com slash prostep and there you can just scroll down or click here on playlist to get to that playlist. Um, and here there is a playlist called Meals of CICD with GitHub Actions. That one is going to help you a lot to understand how to use GitHub Actions. I mean, this is specifically for Millsoft, but it kind of also gives you a basic understanding of what it is and how to set it up. All right, so going back to the repo, the first thing is that we need to create the appropriate files and folders. So first of all, let's create a folder called .github. And then inside that GitHub, we're going to create another folder called workflows. And inside workflows, we're going to create a new file that I normally name build.yaml because um, I don't know, I'm building the Mule application. But in this case, let's just do test.yaml because I just want to try it out. I don't want to do anything fancy. I just want to kind of try it out. I also installed this other extension called GitHub Actions, um, but this is a YAML schema validation and auto completion for GitHub Actions. This kind of helps me a lot, so I can just use uh, like the auto completion and stuff because I don't know all of the things that I can do with GitHub Actions. So, for example, here if I do Control Space, this will let me know what I can put here. Let's start with the name. Testing out the GitHub Actions extension. Then we can set up, let's say, on push. And then branches. And I just want to use the main branch. So let's just put main here. Then let's put some jobs. Um, this is going to be called testing. And then runs on. Here, we're going to select just Ubuntu latest. And then the steps are going to be simply running an echo or something like that, because I literally just want to see how this looks like. So let's do run echo. This works. Yay. We can also make it fancier by putting it like this. And finally, let's do a format document so we can tidy everything up. Now let's save this and commit this. Test workflow, commit, yes, and sync changes, OK? So now if we check out the GitHub Actions extension, this should start running. So now we have the workflow, testing out the GitHub Actions extension. Yes, that's the whole name. And it was finalized. It was correct. It set up the job. It ran the echo and it completed the job. 
you can only see if it was completed successfully or if there was an error, but then it kind of offers you these little icons so you can actually open it up in the browser and check it out. So if I actually go to the GoToWeb 23 repo and I click on actions, I will actually be able to see everything here. So let's check out what happened. Testing, this is the job. Run echo, this works yay. And it literally just outputs this works yay. Now let's add a little bit more flavor to this. For example, if I were to create some secrets, I will normally go here into settings and then secrets and variables, actions. And here I can create a new repository secret. Um, let's say my password or, you know, just password. That's fine. And this will be password one, two, three. Add secret. And now you will be able to add this. And now you will be able to use this secret from your build. So for example, here, I currently have no repository secrets, but if I click on refresh, now I'm going to be able to see this password and I can as well continue creating more stuff like let's say username and it's going to be a uh, Martinez123. So now I have password username and if I go back here and refresh, now I can also see from here that I have password and username. So it's pretty much the same thing that you would do in the browser, but you have it here ready to go. And now let's add some more steps so I can actually run this. Okay, so I added another run with the echo my password is. And then so I can put here my password from my secret. Then I'm going to have to use dollar sign and curly brackets. And then here I can just write secrets dot. And it will already give me my password and username secrets that I had previously created from here. So it's pretty handy. I can see from here, from the auto completion, what is available for me. Now, let me do the same thing for the user. So my username is, and I can just select username and there's that. Now let's format just in case I need to do something, save and commit once again, sync changes. Okay. Now we go to GitHub Actions and let's refresh this. We still have just one workflow. In case you had different workflows or different, for example, YAML files under the workflows folder, then you would see here a bunch of different workflows. And this, you can see only what is running for this current branch. So that's that, this was correct. It was set up the job, run echo, run echo my username is, and my password is, and that's it, it completed the job. So if we go back here in the browser to the actions tab, we can now check out what was actually executed. Run echo my username is, and my password is. In this case, GitHub is smart enough to know that these are secrets and it doesn't actually output them in the logs, but, they are kind of used in the background. So if you were to send these secrets, for example, to a Maven um, file or to use them for running your mail application or stuff like that, the other application would be able to see them. It will just not be locked here because of security reasons. All right, that's all for this video then. I will set you up with this test.yaml so you can kind of see what I did. Um, I won't be able to put this thing there for you to see, but you kind of get the idea of how to do it. Um, and it also helps you with like environments, which I did not demonstrate or with variables, which I also did not demonstrate. So you can kind of play around with it. If you use GitHub actions a lot, maybe this will be helpful for you. The only downside is that you do have to go to the web browser to see the actual steps that it run. That's all for day eight. I will see you tomorrow for day nine. Bye.